We've got a very noble owner of this one. She's going full electric. Hi everybody, Barnaby here from Electric Car Converts, here with our latest build. This is a 1969 Land Rover, lives in London and is used every single day to commute in and out of London um, and really enjoy the city the classic way. Being 50 years old, um, her, her diesel engine, which is original, uh, spews out a lot of smoke. It's perhaps not performing as well as the owner requires. Um, and therefore, they've brought it over and we're going to convert it to an electric Land Rover for them. The owner has actually said to me that he's almost embarrassed, if not feels a little bit bad, turning the ignition on um, every time he starts it up in the morning, if there's pedestrians around, if there's cyclists around, because the smoke that comes out the back, um, you know, doesn't really fit in with London at the minute, which is full of electric car charging points, full of electric cars, full of electric buses, bicycles, scooters. We're really trying to make London a more eco place, um, reduce the, the emissions in the air, this old girl's beautiful though, we can't lose her, we can't lose the classic, the heritage of this vehicle just because she, she sprays out a bit of smoke. So why not make her electric, why not make her 21st century, allow her to charge up anywhere around London, drive around, emissions free, guilt free, and it's pretty, pretty damn cool while we're doing it. So here she is, um, you'll actually notice on the dog that there's oil all over her because she's been underneath it. Um, so, dense scratches, a couple of key things to note are that these are freewheeling front hubs, so that means that we can actually only engage two-wheel drive at times if we like to, which will be, you know, most of the time, um, and that would ensure that we're reducing mechanical drag as much as possible, which therefore increases the range of the vehicle. The owner has had the car um, for roughly a year or so, um, and in that time has sort of kept Exmoor trim in business. Um, so this is a beautiful Exmoor trim hood. And if I show you the interior, we've got some fantastic Exmoor trim seats and door cards, um, all new hood sticks, back seats, and an interesting sort of boat style floor, which I actually think really suits these vehicles. So absolutely lovely. The fuel filler here, is where the type two charger will go. So we'll be able to plug in directly here. Um, the code for this lock is 007. So if anyone wants to come and steal the deals, diesel out of it, that works with me. I know it's expensive these days, um, which is, you know, another reason behind the conversion. What have we got under here? It's all very clean. Um, you can see the bottom of the sump there. You can see the chassis in very good nick. But look, look at this, the dog. It's got oil all over her head, all over her ear, all over her back. So let's have a look under the hood. Um, so you see all the sound deadening, um, perhaps not so necessary anymore. The radiator will come out, the engine will come out, um, we'll leave the heater um, and all that gear there, and we'll leave the brakes and the clutch and all that gear there. The original 12 volt battery will still be used to power things like the headlights, like the wipers, um, and actually to power a couple of, of the electronics that will be going on board but um there she is let me uh start her up there she goes um not bad can't say i like the air filter but um each to their own and she is shaking around so uh, the, the client of this car has had a quote for a full engine rebuild um coming in at twelve thousand pounds of course, electric conversions are expensive, uh, more expensive than £12,000, but ultimately he deemed it worth it. He's going to keep this car for the rest of his life. The amount of diesel that he will save, um, especially at nearly £2 a litre now, well worth putting the investment into this car, making it electric, making it pretty much free to run. So to talk you through what we're going to be actually doing to this car, um, we'll start with how we start the conversations with our clients. So the first thing that we, we do is, is set up a, a phone, phone call consultation with our clients. One of the first things I usually ask is what is the use case of the vehicle? Um, so obviously I know that this vehicle lives in London. I know that it's a commuter's vehicle. Um, so short trips at very low speed. It's not going to be banging up and down the M1, let's say. Um, so we've decided to put five Tesla Model S batteries in it, which give it a, a kilowatt hour pack of 26.5 that's going to be more than ample uh, range we, we don't want to make a car that can go you know 200 300 miles but we don't need to add that weight and add that expense to the build so that's the battery pack that will all go in the front here 
Underneath will go the Hyper 9 motor, um, and the Hyper 9 motor gives out about 120 horsepower, so pretty much double what this has at the moment. But we will software limit that down because that motor is going to be connected to the original gearbox. If we put 120 20 horsepower through a 50 year old gearbox, it's not going to be overly happy with life, nor are the differentials, nor are the you know any of the rest of the drivetrain. So we're going to limit that down, which is again going to give us better range. So beyond the batteries and the motor, we're going to put a 6.6 .6 kilowatt hour charger in it. Um, now this is good to charge the battery pack in sort of four or five hours if you were to plug it in at a supermarket or at a lamppost charger, um, maybe a service station. Around London, they're popping up absolutely everywhere. There's going to be no problem with charging this old girl. Although we can actually set this up as well to be able to run off a three pin socket. Um, so a regular domestic house plug will charge this car up in sort of eight, nine hours. Um, and that just, that makes it fantastic for usability. You can show up outside your, your friend's house for the evening and charge your car up overnight out of any old plug, even if they don't have a charger installed at their house. Um, so beyond that, it's gonna be a standard kit going into it. Uh, we're gonna start pulling it apart in a minute. Um, so engines coming out, fuel tanks coming out, exhaust pipes coming out. If anyone wants to buy them off us, then great. We'll be back when we're in the workshop um, and I'll show you how we're taking this car apart, where we're going to be putting things, and where we can see where we're going to be able to fit things. Um, beyond that, it's adapter plates, it's battery boxes, fabrication of that kind of thing. And we'll wire it all up and see if we can get it going electric. Stay tuned for the rest of the build.